What is up? Welcome to Build. I am your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest, of course, you know from starring alongside Dame Helen Mirren in 2014's The 100 Foot Journey. Uh, you've also seen him on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Halt and Catch Fire, Vice Royce House, 90210. Uh, guys, I could keep going. He's done a ton of amazing stuff you've seen. Now you can catch him Mondays at 9 on Fox as Dr. Devin Pravesh in the new medical drama The Resident, where he stars as The Resident. Uh, if that... <laughs> it's a pretty awesome show. If that wasn't cool enough, man, he'll also be making his directorial debut as part of the Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles with his film 15 years later this month, man. It's a big deal. I'm super excited, folks. The crazy, the talented. Uh, Manish Dayal is here. Make some noise, please. How about that? Heck of a guest. Now, before we bring him out, uh, I believe we have a quick look at the show, so let's go ahead and run that clip. <sighs> she was stable last night when I left my shift. She was happy. I, I don't understand. It happened so fast. I went home. I left her alone. I should have stayed here. You were at the end of a double shift. You can't be here every second of every day. It wouldn't have made a difference. She arrested, we coded her. Too long. I tried everything. Gotten rid of this last night. You were with Lily last night? A new patient, room 5417, Dr. Eileen Jacoby. Do we have any idea why she you coded? She's it? a professor of mine in med school. I'm just trying to make sense of it all. Jacoby's important to me. Lily was my patient, too. Maybe we should talk about it. What happened to your ankle? Another question people need to stop asking me. Okay, let's go to an exam room, all right. You're not touching my ankle. I'm a doctor. Yeah, that's a point. I've seen your work. Hey, Claire Thorpe wants us in her office in an hour. Post mortem on Lily's code. He's punishing himself. He'll keep walking on it until it snaps. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise, please. Minnie Style is here. Yes. Wow. I gotta tell you, man, congrats uh, on everything you got going on right now. Congrats Thank on you. the show, congrats on the film. We're gonna talk about everything. I'm very excited, we got plenty of time. Uh, the, the first first thing I always love to ask, because we have time here, is just, how are you doing, man? How, are, how, are, how is Manish doing, man? How are you? You know, I'm doing all right. <laughs> I, I like that question. I have not been asked that today. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. You know, um, hobbling around the city, I have, a, I have a torn ACL here. No. So yeah, so I'm just uh, getting used to being, uh, and about with it, but um, all is good otherwise. Oh I'm man, wait, wait, uh, cool story, yes, no? I mean, a weird story, I was skiing yeah. in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, about th cool. the day after we wrapped the first season, no the day, at, like the next day, and I got a wrap jacket, uh, we got a wrap jacket, of course, and it uh, had, a, had a pocket in it, and I put my phone in this pocket, which slid down to my waist and locked my hips as I was skiing. And I didn't know there was a, a, a pocket that did that. Yeah. So I couldn't bend my knee. And it snapped as I was skiing down the mountain. And I uh, fell on purpose to, to stop this fall. And I tore this ACL. And oh, yeah. Now I'm having surgery, but interestingly enough, now I know how to pick a doctor after, after working on the show. Yeah, right? That's what I say. Pretty well versed. Yeah. Well, is your phone all right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it, my phone is fine. It, it, it's, it's the most durable thing ever, yeah. Oh, man. All right. So then, uh, at least I was going to say, how's New York been so far? But I guess a little, little touch and go. Huh? Oh, no. It's been great. It's I been love this right? city. I love coming back to New York. It's always a, a really good time. It's something that... Uh, I cherish very much coming back here. All right, for, for real. Well, that's great, man. I'm sorry to hear about the leg. I'm glad that you're figuring things out. Let's let's get into this show. Let's talk about it. Uh, how, let's go to the beginning. How'd you get involved, man? How'd you, how did you become the resident? That's pretty well, cool, by the way. Well, thank you. I think the resident really stands for all of us. We're yeah. the, the good guys fighting, fighting a corrupt system. And uh, I got involved because, you know, first I read the script and I saw a really unique story about 
uh, corruption inside the world of medicine and healthcare. Healthcare is a business. It's it's a, and it's corrupting role on medicine. You know, this is a front row seat to medical error, and that was something that was pretty compelling to me. Also, the role of Devin Pravesh was was one that stuck out to me because, in my mind, he is the picture of the American dream. You know, this is a kid who grew up in blue collar Queens, worked really hard, studied very hard, graduated top of his class at Yale, and became a doctor with, you know, a very idealistic vision of what that was going to be, you know, going to Chastain Memorial Hospital uh, with that vision, only to realize that there's a complex reality that he's about to face and that all is going to come crumbling down. And I thought uh, all of those things made this character pretty compelling. And to me, that's what it is to be American today. For sure. There's a lot I, I want to get into and unpack there. Let's let's start with with Devin, with the character, because there, there is a lot in there that's very interesting about him. When you're preparing for this role, uh, obviously you got the medical stuff that, that you're covering as well, but I think there's a lot of different layers to Devin. Like you said, he has this, this perspective, this preconceived notion of what it's going to be, and it all comes crashing down. Talk to me about fleshing him out, about figuring out how, how you were going to approach him and what that journey was like. You know, for me, it was South Asian representation and representation in general is hugely important to me. And how I wanted to portray him uh, came into play because I wanted Devin to feel like your everyday um, um, example of, of an American kid who's on the rise. Um, he's talented, obviously, but uh, how he solves problems, what makes him unique is perhaps his uh, ambition. I think coming from a family of immigrants instills those certain values, uh, an entrepreneurial spirit that I think he has, uh, but ultimately pulling up his bootstraps and, and getting the job done. And that's ultimately what, what happens. And as his reality begins to become more and more clear throughout the series, you see him uh, not only come to terms with it, but also figure out how to go from book smarts and succeeding in life with your brains to using your instincts yeah. to literally save lives. Yeah. Uh, I, and forgive me, my research was wrong, but I could have sworn I found uh, that you're a first generation... Uh, uh, Indian. Yes, exactly, as well, right? So your parents came over here and then you were born in... Uh, help I was me born in, in the South. In the South, and right. And my mom was, is Canadian. Yes. And my dad is English. And, you know, I was born and raised in the South. Uh, you know, I read from the Bible and the Gita. Um, it was a very, very interesting uh, hodgepodge of, of, of things. So was it easy for you to kind of uh, uh, to sort of parlay a lot of your actual life experience, a lot of things that you came up with? Uh, there's a lot of parallels between you and, and your character on television as well. Uh, or, or were you exploring more? Did you discover more about yourself in, in digging deeper into this character? Well, I think there are similarities for sure. Uh, but I think the biggest difference is I could not achieve it academically what, what Devin did. Uh, but I think overall, you know, uh, Devin is described as a young gunner. And I think that uh, there, there are qualities about that that I, I definitely can relate to. I think all of us can. Um, and I think this, this idea that if you are a first-generation immigrant, the, uh, the, the responsibility to pave new ground and create a very broad vision of who you are and where you come from is imperative. Because if you, you diffuse stereotypes by basically presenting every example of who you are so that no one can pinpoint any singular one or put you in any box. So I, I think that that's really important for first-generation immigrants today in whatever field they're in, whether you are a, an actor or a producer or a doctor or a lawyer, you know, uh, creating moments that um, represent yourself and, and, and the world that you're in is important. Do you ever find, uh, you know, we talked a lot about the experience that, that Devin has where he shows up and he has sort of this preconceived notion of what this world's going to be and those expectations are shattered. Have you shared that experience either entering the entertainment industry or even something on a smaller scale? Like, have you ever had that moment before where, like, I know exactly what I'm getting into and then the carpet gets pulled out from under you? Oh, yeah. You know, I think that that happens all the time. Uh, you know, in this business, of course, you realize the, the work involved and, and, and the dedication involved and... And I think um, in many instances, you realize how hard it is to create something that looks so simple. Um, and I think, think, speaking of the show, for example, you see the hundreds of people involved in it and how hard they work. Our crew is outstanding, and they work very, very hard. Our, our writing staff is excellent, our creators. Everybody's working really, really hard to create this um, very compelling uh, piece of TV. Where did you guys film this out? We film in Atlanta. No way. 
Yeah. What was uh, what was the location like? Because um, we had Zach Braff here, I think, last week talking about Scrubs, and they had an abandoned right. hospital. Did you have? Oh no, we didn't have. Uh, no, you didn't have that. That sounds very cool, but oh, it was. You um, had some stories, man. We <laughs> we had a uh, you know a studio that they built. Yeah. Okay. Um, our That's production. Great job. Oh yeah, I mean this studio is incredible. Um, it's pretty interesting. Like everything seems very real. The geography yeah. of the of the studio, uh, of the hospital, really. Um, you know, everything down to the uh, hand sanitizer stalls or, you, you know, like they're everywhere. Um, <laughs> but it's very, it's very uh, true to life, I think, the, house, the, the sets. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, man. So I got to imagine walking into a set like that, that helps you sort of get lost in the moment and really play into the scene. Uh, and, and to that end, we were talking about this, I think last night this episode, we had a pretty heavy moment. You get a lot of heavy moments. You're in a hospital you're dealing with, especially in this particular show where you're looking at um, pulling the curtain back and looking at corruption stuff. There's there's loss. It happens all the time. It's, an, it's a natural part of this. Do you guys ever find yourself, do you emotionally get caught up when you're playing one of those scenes in that loss? Do you ever find yourself like it gets really heavy on set? I would say yes. Uh, specifically, Devin is a very empathetic character, and I think all, all of us deal with loss and emotion very differently in, in, in the characters we play. Um, you know, there's certain storylines that definitely uh, hit closer to home than others, you know, and I think um, especially when they uh, are the result of medical error. Yeah. It really feels unfortunate, and it feels, it feels you know, unforgivable in many ways. Yeah, for, for no doubt. It, it, it's interesting because you're watching this, and also, too, you're, you're watching this really uh, troublesome backdrop of, like, you know, watch, watching the medical air and all that stuff. But also the reality is these are there are good human beings, and they have to navigate these same moments, these heavy moments for real, and they do it through sometimes really dark humor, which mm -hmm. is a reality of it. Yep. Uh, and I think that's something people are always surprised to find, uh, but it is a necessity of the world. Was that, is that something that, that you guys have found as well, to a lesser degree, of course, yeah. you're making a show. It's not yeah, a you're making a show, but humor is how so many of us deal with tragedy. They, they go hand in hand. So I think all TV shows, you know, especially dark dramas, need humor in order to lift the story. Yeah, that's how um, that's how story storytelling works. Um, and there is a lot of humor. You have to uh, take you yeah, take into account happening. all some of the very interesting patients that come in with very uh, precarious uh, conditions. And um, there, that's the life. That's the life and the behavior of the show that. Um, coupled with its drama that makes it cool. How intense was your uh, sort of familiarizing yourself with the medical world? How deep did you go? How, how much could you handle? Well, I'll tell you the, the terminology is intense. That was, that's, oh, that's the hardest part, you know, because you have to match the terminology with the action that you're doing. Uh, so, if, you know, I remember in the second episode, we're doing a, uh, we're drilling into a bone in the leg uh, in the DACA episode, which is um, one of uh, my favorites. Um, and you have to know that the that how the terminology relates to your action and make sure it's specific. And that requires not just pronouncing the word, but understanding what it is and what it means. Um, I think uh, the world of medicine, like for me getting into it, I, I spoke to other doctors who were at the same place in their career as Devin. Um, and that was really helpful to me. I, I saw a whole wide range of people from uh, people who were a bit more disillusioned and more jaded to folks who were really young and fresh and, and ready to heal the world, you know what I mean? So, and th those perspectives really come into play when, when, when you're um, treating patients, I think. It's pretty. There's a pretty interesting experience to talk to, to all those different people and see that wide spectrum of like uh, if everyone did. Did you identify like this guy's a Devin, this guy's a, a Connor? Like, could yeah, you, could you like yeah, see yeah, into yeah. your head like, oh, I know what these. I, I think so. I think that they they did run the run the spectrum. You know, uh, Devin is a is a character who feels for his patients deeply, and I think soon throughout the series he'll have to realize and and, and learn. Uh, where to apply that and when not to, so to not to burn himself out and survive in this world. Well, that's one of the, fa the fun things. I don't know if fun's the right word, but one of the reasons the show really grips you is the, the, the ride that Devin goes on. I mean, from the pilot episode, he's learning so much so fast, and you're watching so much of this guy's like, point of view it, being forced to sort of upend and change, and it's a really interesting journey. Did you know the full arc from the beginning? Were they riding it while you were filming? Did you know where it was going to land? No. You know, I did not know the full arc, but I did know um, Devin's perspective. I knew his relationship with the other characters. I knew that Dr. Bell would would provide a, 
a new dimension to what it means to be a doctor for Devin. I think he ultimately is a character that really pulls back the curtain for Devin and, and how he comes to terms with it um, and how he will ultimately use uh, Dr. Bell as an example for what not to be or what to be. We don't know. You know what I mean? How, how he shapes Devin is, is um, something in the series that uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Well, as as a fan, looking forward to it as well. We're gonna we're gonna turn it over to audience in a little bit, but there's some other stuff I wanted to talk to you sure. about because you are such a busy dude, and this is awesome. Uh, Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles. I think it kicks off the film festival tomorrow. Actually. Kicks, kicks off, off tomorrow, tomorrow. Ifla in Los Angeles. Also, the New York Indian Film Festival, which is a staple here in the city for um, for South Asians and uh, Indian cinema, and they are premiering my film here in New York on May eighth. Uh, thank you, Congrats. man. Congrats. That's awesome. Really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and this is your directorial debut, right? It is. Right? Uh, it is my di directorial debut. Um, it, the film is called 15 Years Later, and it is about two guys who experience a great tragedy after 9-11, and you cut to 15 years later, and their tragedies ultimately align post-9-11. They're dealing with um, the backlash of the Trump presidency alongside uh, the the uh, trauma from 9-11, and you see how their lives influence each other and how they in some ways, heal each other. There are two guys, one South Asian and one becomes a, a, a pro-Trump cop. And um, Rachel Brosnahan, who is in The Marvelous Miss Maisel, plays Rachel in the movie. Uh, Matt McGorry, who is a big Black Lives Matter activist, uh, plays Jason, and I play Samir. Uh, and we're also premiering um, at Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival in LA. That's amazing, man. Talk, talk to me about where where did the, uh, the the idea for the film come from? How long ago? And, and have you always wanted to direct, man? Was that something you've been Directing's to do? Directing has been one of the most long-standing goals of mine. It's something I've always wanted to do. Uh, and I knew that if I was just going to do it, I just had to do it. Yeah. So I, I did. And I couldn't have done it without a very generous crew, <laughs> uh, a lot of favors, these actors. I, I mean, I'd be lost without them. It was it was all because of uh, the help that I received. I, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and the, I guess the, the idea of the film really really came from. Uh, so interesting. I, I remember you know changing my name at Starbucks because uh, you know my, nobody can pronounce Manish. I guess so. I would say because for for the essence of time, I, I would change my name really quickly and, and just say something as uh, bland as possible so that. I could just get my coffee and get out of there. Like Paul? And I realized how, how <laughs> messed up that was. Yes, like, this, this, that's not that. right. I shouldn't. And I was thinking about that and how that applies to, to us you know, in a larger context of the world and like what happened to us after 9-11 because 9-11 was uh, a big deal for me. It changed a lot in my life and a, lo and a lot of, for my peers. And I thought about how uh, our identities were impacted and how many of us were clinging to the same lifeboat. Like how are we going to... Uh, uh, grow from this? How are we going to make, get our identities back? How are we going to uh, be uh, represented in, in media in, in, a, in a good way again? How, how are we going to fix this? And I was thinking about how f over time so many people's lives have changed. The, the violence against South Asians, Indians, Pakistanis, Arabs uh, throughout the entire country, has, has, um, has, there's been a resurgence of violence against, uh, against those populations. And um, I wanted to spotlight that in this movie in some way. And I realized that uh, that in order to tell the story, it really had to be tonal. Uh, the script really s lives in its tone. Um, so I think that people will either respond to it or, or not. You know, I think it's a I think it's a, a compelling short piece that I hope. Uh, People dig. For sure, man. Well, yeah. you, you've you done, it exists. You, that's the hardest part of any creative passion, man, is seeing it through to fruition and making right. the thing. You've done it. It sounds like a phenomenal story. Uh, talk about, were you always going to direct and star? Was that the way you wanted no. to get into the I, world? No, actually, <laughs> no, actually, I had cast uh, a different, an actor to, to play this part so I could rely solely on the the directing portion because that was Man. the most time consuming thing i uh, but i re but about 6 days before we started shooting and i couldn't change my uh, schedule again the actor dropped out and yeah. and so i was like uh, okay so yeah so i had to just trial do it by myself. fire let yeah. me figure it out like, uh, i guess i can do this oh, man um, but it actually it worked out fine, and um, you know Matt and uh, Rachel and Tracy just 
soar, and they, they keep the movie afloat, and they're fantastic. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. They really uh, illuminate the pain that these characters have. It sounds like an incredible experience, and I'm really looking forward to checking out the film. Have you uh, broached the idea, this passion for directing? Have you talked to any of your friends and the team over at The Resident? Hey, let's see how far we get. I'd love to direct an episode. Do you bring that up? Oh, I haven't yet. Oh, uh, man, you got to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something that you know, would be a dream come true for yeah. me, no, no doubt. Um, it's something I love to do. I realized, you know, uh, while making 100, uh, sorry, while making uh, 15 years later, I I wanted to direct, and it was that it's something I want to do again. I mean, I love acting. Acting is definitely you know where my heart is, uh, but um, I think you know another part of that is there's just this idea that as people of color in in a world that we're in today, uh, in Hollywood, you must diversify your portfolio as much as you can. Uh, I don't think that roles are just going to constantly be flooding in. Like you, we, we need to exercise other areas of our interest as well because um, that's ultimately how we're going to represent each other in, in a large in a, in a large way. So, yeah, so I suppose then you feel a responsibility, not just as a, a creative, passionate person, but as, as someone of South Asian descent that, like, it's almost like your responsibility to create as many things as you can because you're also creating these opportunities right. as well. Right, yeah. sure. Or just put out as many interpretations as you can so that... Um, that we are broad and we we can't be singled in any way. I think that's that's uh, that's important. Well, you, you're you're doing your part, man. You got so many irons in the fire. I also read. I, I was looking at the, the film fest page, and it said you optioned the book uh, Stringer Reporters Year in the Congo, and you're going to yeah. produce and star in that yes, as well. You're yes, working on. Yes, uh, we're How, how's that coming? Working so hard far? to put that yeah. project together. It's a passion project of mine. It is a book about um, this young journalist who graduates like like Devin, top of his class uh, from uh, Harvard and gets um, decides to go to the Congo to cover their first democratic election in over 60 years. And it's very risky move and he does it and along the way he discovers uh, a war crime which he cannot ignore and it, he finds out that it, he links it to uh, what's happening in the election and um, and it's a really fantastic book about you know the new ways today, how we're going to hold powerful people accountable and 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 how you really navigate that 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 world of corruption that sounds wild man you got to yeah. promise when you finish that project you're coming on back you absolutely me all let I'd me know how to. it goes all right yeah. man? thank you uh, i'm running out of time i got to go over to the audience i promise them we can take some questions i see some microphones out there i believe we're going to start right here yeah. hi manish right manish, manish. Uh, my name is danny and my question is is there a dream actor or actress or a director that you can see yourself working with and why That's a good yeah, question. That gets your mind. I really would like to work with Leo DiCaprio one day. Uh, I think he is one of these. I don't know him. I don't know his uh, how his process really, but he seems like an actor that will keep you on your feet at all times, and there's something pretty exciting about that. Um, just an actor who's so in it. Um, director. There's quite a few directors that I would I'd like to work with. Paul Thomas Anderson is one of them. Uh, Obviously, I'd love to be directed by Steven Spielberg. These are um, people who I think really have uh, shaped filmmaking. filmmaking. Um, yeah. So, and but so far, I've been so fortunate and lucky to have worked with such great directors and, and actors. Uh, some some really cool greats. Yeah. Thank you. Little little unknown named Dame Helen Mirren yeah. must have been. That must have been. <laughs> oh, her. Yeah. 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 That one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never yeah. heard of her. Right. But that must have been a life change. I'm sure you've talked about this a million times. You've been asked, yeah. what was Dave Helen Mirren yeah, like? Yeah, but I mean, you know, everyone, awesome. it's, a, like, it's a cool question. It's yeah. fine. She's, she's just a lot of fun. You know, she doesn't take life too seriously. She doesn't take anything too seriously, which makes her, her work float in such a nice way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. letting me ask it one more time. Sure, sure. Uh, we've got time. Oh, we got time for one more question. It's going to come from, where's our microphone? Hi. Back there. Hello. Um, so uh, you were on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, what was it like playing a... And inhuman on the show, and and how is it like working on a drama like this compared to like a more action like uh, oriented show? Like That's that? an awesome question. Um, working on Agents of Shield was so fun. Like it just, I loved it. You know, the special effects work was really great. The the fighting sequences were really great. Um, just working with the fight coordinators is a lot of fun. 
Um, it's very different, of course, than, than working on a drama, but ultimately the, the work is the same. This, the, the acting and, and the understanding the scenes and, and making them happen and working with the director, all those things are the same. Um, but with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you get to do things like, I remember doing a green screen where, um, where VJ was being dunked into the bottom of the ocean and he was being husked. I mean, on that, I fell out of a jet, a, a helicopter, I got burned, I drowned, husked, like everything happened. V VJ, I don't know how, I mean, he's just, yeah, everything happened to that guy. Um, but really working on those special effects made it made it really cool and different than anything I've done before. Uh, is there a larger sense of scale when you're on like a Marvel show? Just because mar historically, you know, they're telling these massive fantastical stories. They're throwing boatloads of money at it. You know, it's Marvel. Do you walk in, you immediately know, oh yeah, this is, this is a Marvel set. I can tell. I think so. I mean, it, it's a TV show and it's on, it's on, you know, a lot in L.A. So... Yeah, you you feel that you you know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of attention to detail and and because um, you know I remember doing the helicopter sequence you know you're lifting off from a helicopter in a beach and I think we were in Arrowhead and flying I mean so much is involved you you definitely feel the feel the size of what you're what you're a part of. Well, yeah. you guys had the little hand sanitizer, so no slouch. I mean, yes. this is still a pretty yes. amazing. We we have hand sanitizer. Okay, <laughs> the machines don't have batteries in them, but but we have hand. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. They got the machines on all the walls. Right, because the batteries make noise. Yeah. So when you're shooting, you can't make noise. Oh, because you don't want the little shh shh Right, I think that's why the batteries... You know what, dude? All right, that is attention to detail. That's next level, man. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you wash your hands. Yeah. All right, there we go. Uh, well, look, I'll say one last time before we get out of here. Uh, the Resident is Mondays at 9 on Fox. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for being here. Congrats on everything. Keep an eye out. Uh, the film festival, you're in the, the L.A. Film Festival, the New York Film Festival. New York Indian Film Festival. New York Indian Film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that new project. Oh, tonight, uh, the Real Works Gala is tonight. That's why also why I'm in New York. Check them out. Realworks.org is an organization that provides free film classes to inner city youth in New York, and we're celebrating them tonight as champions of diversity, and it's something that all New Yorkers should know about. It's a fantastic organization. Uh, Realworks.org. We all works out all right. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for everything, man, for being such a creative force and finding some time to come hang out with us. One more time, everybody, make Thank some noise. Thank you.